Well, good morning, everyone. Just want to welcome you to Refuge. As Pastor Matt said on the video, my name is Tim Kleiner. Um, and just also want to welcome all those who are tuning in online. Uh, we trust that you will enjoy today's service. Um, as Pastor Matt had mentioned, um, we are talking about the subject of living in hope this, this month. And, and today, particularly, we are going to be talking about confidence in his promises. And as that word hope, as we defined in this series, it comes from the Greek word elipis, which just means a confident expectation. So we have a confident, unmovable expectation in the promises of God. And so you may have had promises made to you before, and maybe some of those have been broken promises. Anybody have any broken promises that have been made to you? And so that can leave a hurt, and it can be a, a painful experience. But with God, there is no broken promises. And so the first scripture that I just want to talk to you about is found in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 through 18. And it says, God also bound himself with, uh, with an oath so that those who receive the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, for your mercy, Father, for your grace that you have shown towards us. Father God, we thank you uh, for your word today. We ask, Father God, that you would reveal, unfold, unveil your word to our hearts, that the entrance of your word gives light, Father. We thank you, Father God, for a clear understanding, for the changing, for the restoration of our minds, Father God, and we endeavor to put the word of, the, put the word of God into practice in our everyday life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so BibleGateway.com. Anybody heard of BibleGateway.com? BibleGateway.com lists 5,467 divine promises of God. That is how many divine promises are in the Word of God. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, all the promises of God find their yes and amen in Him. So God says yes to you. In Christ, if you are, have a union with him, if you are a believer, he says yes to you. He doesn't say no to you. He doesn't reject you. There is no broken promises. He says yes to you. All the promises of God are available to you in Christ. And so our foundational, our theme verse that we've been talking about this month is in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. So let's, let's look at that. May the God of hope, and right there, he is the God of hope. In other words, he is the source of all our expectation, of all our hope. So in other words, without God in our lives, we do not have a future expectation. There is no hope for us without God. He is the God of hope. Then he says that the God of hope would fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So if we are to have joy, if we are to have all joy, all peace, then we have to be in the position of believing or in faith. So that or the purpose that the power of the Holy Spirit that you may abound or excel in hope. So then here what we're seeing is in order for you to abound in hope, you have to be in the position of believing. So then 
you could say it like this. Your hope, your confident expectation is on the ground or the basis of your faith, is what you believe, is what you're persuaded about, what you hold as a conviction. Your confident expectation is based upon that. And so like we said earlier, we, we define the word hope by a confident expectation. And so there are what we could say two different types of hope. One is a natural hope. What is this natural hope? A natural hope is just a wish or a desire to be optimistic about something but unsure of its fulfillment. Oh, I hope that happens, but I sure don't know. It is the, mo- the, the, the modern idea of hope is to wish, to expect, without the certainty of its fulfillment. It's to desire very much, but with no real assurance of getting what you desire. That is contrary to what Bible hope is, to what the God of hope is. Do you think the God of hope is uncertain or that he just has wishful thinking? Think about it for a second. God the Father in heaven turns to Jesus and he says to Jesus, boy, I sure hope my plan works, but I don't know. Do you think that God is that way? Or do you think that God is, has a confident expectation knowing that his word will perform what he said it would do? He is the God of hope. There is no optimistic, wishful thinking without a future with God. He knows the end from the beginning. Spiritual hope, though, Bible hope, is that confident expectation of what is sure and certain. In the Bible, hope is never a static or a passive thing. It is a dynamic substance. It is active and it is directive and life-sustaining. It is intentional. It always has um, a mindset or an optimistic view of the future. That is how God is. He is the God of hope. Now going back to that verse, that he would fill us with all joy and peace in believing. So if we are not maintaining that constant attitude of all joy and all peace, then we are not living in the confident expectation of his promises. If we are down, if we are depressed, then we're not allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to influence our life to abound or to excel in hope. Now that verse that we read in Hebrews chapter 6, back to verse 18, so God has given both his promise and his oath. These two are unchangeable. His promises never change changes. He will fulfill all his promises. Therefore, we'll skip to that part, therefore we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence. Why? Because it is impossible for him to lie. As we hold to the hope that lies before us. So that word hold there in the original language of Greek means to hold tight a strong, hold-fasting grip. So that tells me that in life, we are going to face circumstances that are going to try to take our hope away. There are going to be things in life, trials, testing, circumstances that will try to get you to keep expecting the promises of God. So that's why he says, It's through faith and patience that we inherit the promises. Don't let go of your expectation. Don't give up. You may be sitting here today and you feel like giving up, that there's no hope. But God is telling you, keep expecting. Don't give up. 
don't let go of your hope. So faith is the basis, the ground on which our hope stands. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, we see this verse. It says, now faith is the assurance. The New King James, King James translation says, now faith is the substance. ESV says, it is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So let's just define some terms real, real quick in, in this verse. The word faith here literally means a persuasion, a conviction. It means confidence. It means trust. That's what faith is. It is what you hold as a deep rooted conviction in your life. And so when we talk about this verse, many people use this verse as a definition of faith. And that is true. There's, a, there's an element of truth to that. But this verse, I believe, shows more what faith does than what faith is. Because faith is a conviction. It is um, a persuasion. So now let's look at to see what it does. It is the assurance of things hoped for. And again, this word hope is not that wishful thinking, not just that desire, well, maybe so, well, maybe hope so. It is that confident expectation. But I, I want to zero in on this word assurance, or as the King James uh, translation says, substance. And so this word substance is the Greek word uh, hoopstasia. And it is a compound word. In other words, there's two words in Greek that's combined to make one word. And, that, and um, the first part is that word hoopa. And it means to place under. To place under. And the second part of that word means, uh, hestima, means to stand. So it is something that stands underneath something else. So you could say it like this. It's a foundation. It is a substructure. That's what that word literally means. Figuratively, it does mean confidence or assurance. But properly, that word literally means a substructure, a foundation, or a ground. So let's read it like this. Now, faith is the foundation of your confident expectation. So, in other, in other translations, the Smith's literal translation reads it like this. And faith is the foundation of things hoped for. The Geneva Bible, and the Geneva Bible was the, the major, the main English Bible before the King James translation. It came out in 1587. But those translators rendered this verse like this. Now, faith is the ground of things which are hoped for. The Weymouth New Testament says, now faith is a well-grounded assurance of what we hope for. So without faith, we do not have a foundation for our confident expectation. So if our foundation of faith is weak, it will give up and it will let go of hope when there's testing, when there's trials, when there's circumstances in our life. And so, uh, back before we, my family moved here, we lived in Oklahoma. And in Oklahoma, we owned a home. And if you know about the landscape of Oklahoma, it's very flat, and the soil is made of clay. And we owned a home there, and we were putting our home out on the market um, so we could move up here to Stevens Point. And so, you know, you go through that um, inspection and, and all of that. And before we had that done, we noticed that walls started to, to crack. Um, corners, there would be big gaps. Um, you couldn't close the door properly. You'd have to yank up on the door handle shove, and shove it into the door frame. Uh, not ideal, right? So the house is getting all cattywampus, you know what I mean? And so... Checking that out, there was major foundational issues. In fact, in order for them to fix that foundation, we had to have structural engineers come in. They had to put 13 hydraulic piers all around that house and jack it up to make it all level. 
because things weren't functioning right. Things weren't, uh, you, you couldn't do things properly in that home because of the bad foundation. And it costed me. It costed me a lot of money. It was 13 piers at about 450 bucks a piece. So without a proper foundation, it will cost you. That is how it is with faith. If we don't have a strong foundation of faith in our life, it will cost us. Things won't work properly. Our confident expectation will be weak. And so when there's trials and circumstances, and we all face those, but when we're going through those, we will crumble in the midst of those storms, in the midst of those circumstances, because our foundation has become weak. So how do we strengthen our foundation? Well, we know that the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The word of God is what strengthens our faith. The word of God is what establishes our faith. Now, we read in, in Romans chapter 15 our, our theme verse, but in that same chapter, a few verses up, he, Paul is also talking about hope. And in verse 4, he says this, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instructions, that through endurance or patience, steadfastness, and through the encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. So it's through the encouragement of scriptures that we can have confident expectations. So if we're not in the scripture, the scripture is what shows us the promises of God. The scriptures contain the promises of God. So if we don't know his promises in our life, then we cannot have faith because you cannot have faith for something that you are ignorant and have no idea about. It is through the knowledge of scriptures. Uh, Psalms 119 verse, uh, uh, verse is 114. So Psalm 119, 114 says, You are my refuge and my shield. Your word is my source of hope. The word of God, the God of hope, gives us his word, gives us his promises. They are our source of our confident expectation. So let me ask you, how is your foundation? What are you believing for? What, are, what is your faith in? It has to be in his promises. And so when you're believing God, when you're praying, find the promises in his word that support what you're believing. It is the promises that are contained in scripture that will give you the basis for your faith. Don't just find one. Find one, find two, find three, find as many promises that cover your situation. Why? Because it's like putting those peers into that foundation and it's jacking them up. It's making your faith stronger. So faith is the foundation of your confident expectation. Your faith has to come first before that confident expectation is there. So, we'll look at another verse here. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24, this verse is a, a verse that Jesus spoke about faith. And if we could bring that up, I'm just going to read it from the screen. So this is from the New King James translation. It says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things, you could substitute that word things there for promises. So let's read it like that. Therefore, I say to you, whatever promises you ask when you pray, believe that you receive the promise and you will have the promise. So let me ask you a question there. When do you believe that you receive the promise? You believe you receive the promise when you pray. So when you pray, that is the moment that you exercise, that you release your faith into that promise. See, faith is present tense. 
We read that verse in Hebrews chapter uh, 11, 1. It says, now faith is. It doesn't say, now faith was or faith will be. Faith is. Faith is a present tense reality. So the moment you pray, you believe, present tense, you believe that you receive the promise. So when, you, so in like, let's give this example. If you're believing God that he would heal your physical body, the moment you pray, you believe that you receive that healing. You believe that you receive that healing in your heart, in your spirit. You have a strong conviction, no matter how you feel, no matter what symptoms you have, you have healing, present tense, okay? And you will have them. Now, look at that phrase, and you will have them. That phrase, will have, is that present tense or is that future tense? It's future, right? We all went to school, had English class, looked at diagrams. I hated diagrams. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> you will have them. That's future tense. Faith believes that you receive the answer. Hope gives you the power to confidently expect them to materialize. You see that? Faith receives it now. Hope gives you the confident expectation that you will have them in your life. So faith believes the promise has been given when you pray and receives it in the heart before it ever materializes in the natural. Hope then empowers you to confidently expect that you will receive them, that it will come to pass in your life. Now, the word promise, um, if you look this word up online from dictionary.com, the definition of, of the word promise just means a declaration that something will or will not be done or given. It's, it's, it's a declaration. The Word of God declares what belongs to us. Those are our promises. But notice it also gives this def definition, and this is just dictionary.com. It says, an express assurance on which expectation is to be based. A promise is an express assurance on which expectation is can be based. So I'm telling you today, keep expecting. Keep expecting the promises of God in your life. Now, this Christmas, I got some extra Christmas spending money. How many of you guys like some extra Christmas spending money? None of you guys like extra Christmas spending money? Come on. So I got some extra Christmas spending money, and so I went on to Amazon. Now, if you know me, something about me, I enjoy movies. I enjoy sound systems, and, and I have in my basement a little mini uh, movie theater room with surround sound, got all the speakers and all, and all that. And so I wanted to upgrade some of my speakers this year, so I used some of that extra spending money to buy some new speakers, and, and I bought, uh, one of the speakers that I bought was a Klipsch 12-inch, 400-watt subwoofer, okay? It is awesome. Like, when there's an explosion, it just hits you right in the chest. Jennifer, she hates it, shakes the whole house. It's, it's awesome, okay? Love it. So, I was pumped to get this subwoofer in the mail. Now, see, I didn't, I ordered that subwoofer. I had that confirmation email. I love confirmation emails, that that order is mine. Now, it, it, I paid for it. It belongs to me, even though I can't see it, even though it's not there present in my possession. That confirmation email says that it belongs to me. Now then, 
the day of its arrival, I have that tracking number. I'm looking outside. Any time there's a car that, get, that goes by, I jump out of my chair, see if it's the delivery guy. Nope, just another car. I mean, if I go out of the room for, for a second, come back, my daughter Allie's laying there on, on the couch uh, just chilling out. I just, I asked her, did the mailman come? No, Dad. I kept asking her, it started to bug her. Um, so I'm looking, I'm waiting for that package to arrive. I was in expectation for that package. The package was on the way. The package, what I had ordered, was on the way. Amen? It was on the way. The promises of God, this is your confirmation email. All the promises of God are yes and amen in him. This tells you they belong to you. And even though you can't see it, they are yours. You just And so all you do is you keep expecting. The package is on the way. The package is on the way. So turn to your neighbor and say, keep expecting. Turn to, your, to, turn to the other person and say, the package is on the way. My package is on the way. So, if you need healing, the package is on the way. Healing is on the way. The package of deliverance is on the way. The package of, of, of provision is on the way. The package of victory and deliverance from, de- from, from um, addiction is on the way. My package is on the way. So, Guess what? There was a delay in that package. (laughs) That package ended up coming the next day. And so I was disappointed. But you know what? That's how it is in our walk with God. Things don't always happen when we want it to happen. Things Things don't always come when we think they should come. Okay? But that doesn't mean that that wasn't on the way. Do you think that that, uh, the person who fulfilled that package at at Amazon said, well, I don't will to send that to to him? I didn't think, well, I wonder if he willed not to send that to to, to me. I wonder if if it's his will. No, I had the order confirmation. It was his will to send that to me. It belonged to me. And just because there was a delay doesn't mean there was a denial. A delay in the promises of God does not mean there's a denial. The package is on the way. And so a lot of times we get out of faith when there's a delay. And when we do that, it's like stamping on that package return to sender when he's in the neighborhood. See, your package is so close. The promises of God for your life are right there. Don't give up when there's a delay. You keep pressing forward. You hold on to that promise. You have a confirmation. Now we look at the example of Abraham in Romans chapter 4. When God first appeared to Abram, before he became Abraham, was when he was 75 years old. And at 75 years old, he said that all the families of the earth would be blessed in him, through him, through his prodigy, through his ancestry, all the nations of the world. Here he had no children. Now he tried to rush things, tried to fulfill what God had promised him on his own, messed up, But God had a specific plan and purpose, a specific promise. 24 years later, when he was 99 years old, God appeared to him and told him that he would have a son through his wife, Sarah. He was was 99 years old. When Isaac was born, he was 100. Sarah was nine years younger than, than him. These are two old people that God made a promise to, right? So, we'll just pick it up in verse 17, what Paul says. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. That's what God does. That's what faith does. It calls into existence the things that are not 
present. And what Abraham did is he started calling himself Abraham. See, that's what Abraham means. When God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, he was in turn calling those things that don't exist as though they are. Abraham means the father of many nations. And Abraham did the same exact thing. He confessed what God said. He started calling himself Abraham. He confessed what the Word of God said about his situation. Now, verse 18, in hope he believed against hope. The King James says, against hope he believed in hope. Now, that's a little bit kind of muddy. So, what he's saying there is, against all odds, in other words, when all natural hope was gone, when all wishful thinking and optimistic view with an uncertain end was gone, he believed in confident expectation. Against hope, he believed in hope. He believed in confident expectation that what God said to him would come to pass. He did not weaken, verse 19, he did not weaken in faith. In other words, that foundation of faith in his life did not become weak and crumble. When he considered his own body, which was good as dead, since he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. So in other words, he knew the circumstances. He knew naturally there was no way that he should ever conceive seed or, or give seed to Sarah, or that Sarah should be able to give birth. He saw that circumstances. But even, what he, even though he saw that circumstances, he didn't allow the natural to affect that deep-rooted foundation conviction that was in his heart. Verse 20, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promises of God. We have to refuse to fear. We have to refuse to be unbelie in unbelief. We cannot, we have to refuse to be shaken. But he grew strong in faith as he gave glory to God. What strengthened that foundation? So we read talked about that foundation, the foundation is established and strengthened by the Word of God in our lives, making it a priority in our lives. The other way that we can strengthen that foundation of faith is by giving glory to God in the midst of the circumstances. That's what faith does. It doesn't care what it looks like. Faith rejoices in the midst of the circumstances, and it will strengthen and undergird your faith. Verse 21, fully convinced that God was able to do what he has promised. So don't look at the circumstances that are around you. I don't know what you're facing. I don't, I don't know what you're going through. We all go through things. But I'm telling you, Jesus is telling you today, don't give up. Don't let go of your expectation. Hebrews 6, 11, verses, uh, 6, verse 11 through 12 says, and we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish. So in other words, that we might not give up, that we may not be lazy and let things go, but imitators of those who through faith and patience or endurance 
That word endurance there, or patience, literally means to be constantly consistent. That's what it means. It's a steadfastness. It's an unmovable unshakenness. No matter what happens in our life, we are going to endure it and keep expecting. So that through faith and patience, we would inherit the promise. In Joshua chapter 23, verse 14, Joshua is coming to the end of his life. And so Joshua, he takes over for Moses. Moses was not permitted to go to cross the Jordan and to go into the promised land. And so they had to face battles. They had to face circumstances. They had to face all the ites that we read about in, in Scripture, right? There was testing. There was trials. There were circumstances. God told Joshua to be strong and, and courageous and not to fear in the midst of the circumstances, in the midst of the challenges that you have to go through. Be strong and be courageous and do not fear. And in verse 14 of the 23rd chapter, Joshua gives his final message to the children of Israel. And he says, and now I'm about to go the way of all the earth. In other words, he's going to die. And you know in your hearts and souls, all of you, that not one word has failed of all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you. All have come to pass. Not one of them has failed. Not one of them. But what did they have to do? They had to, be, they had to remain strong and courageous and not get into fear and not give up. Don't give up on your hope. Don't give up on your faith. Every single word that God has promised you will come to pass. Now, as I said, we all face challenges. You know, I, me and my wife have talked about this before. Um, so some of you have heard this testimony. But we were, uh, had a, a baby a couple years ago, Maddie. And she's now three. And so she was born almost 33 weeks premature. And so she had what Jennifer had, what was called a vasia previa. And what that means is, is that the, the umbilical cord, uh, she actually had two, two different things. One, the umbilical cord, the blood vessels were all exposed. So all the blood vessels, uh, blood that was going to Maddie in the womb, those blood vessels were outside of the umbilical cord. And then she had the vasia previa where the placenta and the umbilical cord was down by the cervix. And so she had to go into the hospital at almost 33 weeks. And she started having Braxton Hicks contractions, false contractions. But Maddie, her head moved down into the birth canal and her head was pressing on that umbilical cord with the exposed blood vessels. And so what was happening, her blood pressure was drastically dropping. 50 years ago, she would have been dead. Without the medical science that we have now, without ultrasounds, we would have never have known she would have been dead. She would have bled out within the matter of minutes. And it's very possible that at 50 years ago, Jennifer would have also passed away. So they're having to do this unplanned C-section. And so they're preparing my wife. Uh, they re take her out of the hospital room that we were staying, take her into surgery to, to prep her before they would allow me to come in there with her. So I'm sitting there, and all these things are racing through my mind, okay? 
And it doesn't matter how advanced medical science is, when that's your wife and that's your child, there's things that are going to attack your mind. Right? So as I'm sitting there, what did I do? Did I say, well, I hope God comes through. I don't know. No, I didn't do that. What I did is I put worship music on. And I began to worship God. And that strengthened my faith. And it gave me a confident expectation. Our theme verse, now the God of hope, may fill you with all joy and peace in believing. There was a joy and there was a peace that came because I was in faith. And even though we went through that situation, I had confidence and a peace that it was going to be okay. I began to praise God. Romans 12, 12 says, rejoice in hope. Rejoice in confident expectation. Patient or endure tribulation. So when we're in the middle of tribulation, we have to rejoice in confident expectation and count it all joy. There's an old hymn, and I'll just close with this. Have you ever heard of that, the old hymn, Standing on the Promises of Christ my King? And I'll just read one frame from it. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I just spoke for just a few minutes about your promises that are in your word. That they are yes and amen to us, that they belong to us. So I pray for each single person in this auditorium and those who are watching online, Father God, that, that, these, that these men and women would not give up on their faith, but their faith would be strong, that they would confidently expect you and your promises, that they would not give up on their hope, and in the midst of the circumstances and in the midst of the trials that we are going through, we look to you and we surrender our life to you and we expect you to move in our life. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're out there today and you don't know what it means to have this hope, our God is a God of hope. He is the source of all hope. And without him, we have no hope. We have no future. Because we all have the sentence of death on our life without Christ. We have all have judgment from God upon us if we do not turn to him in faith and in surrender. He made a way for you to have hope. And that is through the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. And if you have faith in him, if you have saving faith and surrender your life to Christ, then he can give you that hope. Now we call this a believer's prayer. It is for those who have this saving faith in Jesus to acknowledge his lordship and to surrender. So if you have never surrendered your life to Jesus and you want this hope that we're talking about, I want you to lift your hands. Thank you, I see that hand. So let's pray this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you right now. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I am in need of a Savior. I believe that you came to this earth, that Jesus came and died upon that cross for my sin, for my shame, for my guilt. 
And I believe that he was raised from the dead by the Father on the third day to give me new life, to give me a future and a hope. I ask you to come into my life, change me, fill me, make me the person that you want me to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to let you know that God says yes to you. There's no more guilt. There's no more shame. He says yes to you. He doesn't reject you. If we could have the prayer team come up. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we just invite you to come up and meet once one of these prayer team uh, persons. They will help you get started on your walk with God. Worship team, we're going to just sing and we're going to praise God. So whatever you're facing, whatever circumstances are in your way, as we are praising and as we are worshiping God, give glory to him in the midst of what you're going through. It will strengthen your faith and keep you from holding on. And let me tell you this. Remember, your package is on the way. The promises of God, they are on the way to you. Don't give up.